Well, I'm now joined in the studio here at uh, Stream Commerce in Miami by uh, Brian Morose from Google. Brian, Hello. pleasure to have you with us. Thanks very much, Steve, for joining us. Um, the one thing that Google is not short of is data. For sure. Um, I think we're beginning to see some sort of shift taking place between people getting very, very anxious about the way in which their personal data could be used, can be used, is being used, to becoming uh, slightly more relaxed around it as long as they can get value out of that data exchange. What's your view and perception of where we are? Yeah, precisely. I think the place we are right now is the kind of outrage phase, which is a good place to be. Um, people needed to understand uh, from all types of companies what, how their data is being used, what's being collected, where is that going. Once that's something that's in the general awareness, general mindset, um, I think people have a much better hold on, OK, this is what's out there about me. What can I control? And if you let me control it, if you as a brand let me tell you, I will give you this information about me as long as you provide me value. I think we're seeing that already starting to happen. I think there's a lot of people who today will say, oh, you know, I know they collect all this. I don't really care. But there's plenty of people who are very concerned. Give them a little bit of control and say, this is what we'll give you in return. This is how we can help your life. This is how we can improve your shopping experience. This is how we can save you time. If we allow them to have that kind of gatekeeping for their own information, I think people would be very surprised, brands would be surprised at how open people would be. Now, when you look towards the future, um, how do you see the usage of data changing, evolving from where we are today? And how is that going to help uh, both brands and uh, brand owners and marketeers understand their customers better and serve them better? I think one of the things that we're seeing is a move a little bit away from strictly using data for, you know, where should my media spend go type of, of focus to what does this data tell me about this person or people who are interested in this product as human beings. So I think that's one of the biggest shifts. And I'll, I'll, I'll phrase that like I do even at work. You know, we have a bunch of coders. We have a, many, many people that are brilliant AI scientists and people who make machine learning algorithms. That's incredibly useful, but I think we're coming to the phase now where your company and your brand needs to be all integrating those people with people who are sociologists, who are anthropologists, um, who are artists. I think that's where data is coming together to a place where it'll actually become much more useful, whereas right now I feel like data is used in a lot of cases to be, to be frank, a little invasive. Oh, I know you've looked at these shoes three times online, so I'm going to remarket you these shoes for the next two weeks. Yes, I mean, sometimes when you search for something, you feel like you're being hounded, like, chased on. around the net. By, uh... <laughs> and the worst is when you've already bought the thing and you see it for the next three weeks. I'm like, I bought the shoes. Um, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> oh, exactly. So I think we're going to be moving a little bit away from that to. So is, it, is, this, is, this, is this more about sort of whether the, the, the science meets the art? Yes, exactly. So, and also, like, what, are people actually, what do people actually want from you as a brand? I think it's going to become easier and easier to get that sense. Rather than using a focus group um, or surveys or uh, you know, store visits, if you actually have access to people's data and they want to give it to you, it'll teach you what they want from you very clearly. And I say this like, pretty frequently with clients. Um, you may lie to me in a survey. You may lie to me in a focus group. Nobody lies to the Google search bar. Um, like, you know, if you look at, if, if I ask anyone, will you give me your last six months of search history? To this day, I've been at Google for 13 years, no one has ever said yes. Um, so that to me, that type of data, that type of intimacy is actually a very positive thing. And I think, again, the data and the art coming together in a very humanistic way, rather than in a very marketing heavy kind of, you know, invasive way is, is where the successful brands are going to be in five years. Now, we're, we're very used to, um, uh, creating data around uh, physically type, typing stuff in. Mm -hmm. in uh, you know, we're moving further and further into a, a voice-enabled world. Mm -hmm. What changes in data strategy will have to happen in a voice world rather than a, a keyboard input world? You're going to have to be a lot more clever about um, covering linguistic data. So I'll give you an example. Um, and this is, a, this is still, we're still talking text. Uh, we have an internal tool that we've been working on uh, on my team that tries to analyze YouTube comments, so this is still typing, and we'll get to voice in one second. Let's say there's 10,000 comments on a really popular video. What's the sentiment of those comments? Is it positive? Is it happy? Is it angry? Is it sad? That's really hard to do, and using machine learning to do that. Now take 
but written text is pretty easy to at least say the word sucks generally is a, a negative sentiment. Maybe not you know, all the time. Or the word like jerk, usually, you know, yeah, bad. So Amazing, good, usually good. <laughs> uh, however, when you start to get into verbalizations, so if we were to do a transcript of us talking right now, I'm using ums and ands and I'm kind of meandering a little bit and then kind of coming back to the point as my neurons fire and my brain comes back to where I'm going. Uh, that's and, also, a, and also there's physical tone of voice. Totally. Sarcasm, you yep. know. Yeah, if I'm like, great job, yeah. right? That's Thank a little you. different than great job. Uh, so those things are difficult, but it also gives a much deeper element of understanding of the human brain and what people are actually asking and trying to do. And even in the search bar, even in typing, we have seen, and I was been there and watched it happen, um, typing search has gone from um, best headset to what is the best headset to what's the best headset for when I play video games. People want to interact with technology in a human way, in a vocal way, because that's how our brains work. That's how we communicate. Um, so I actually think it's going to be an incredibly rich area. And again, as long as people feel comfortable with that data, I think it's going to expose a lot more truths about what people really want from brands. So, so what advice would you give brands um, to, to prepare themselves for a, for a voice world? I would say right now, and it, it, it would be like really right now, it should have been last year, start experimenting with voice, start experimenting with Google Assistant, start experimenting with Alexa, throw something out there. It doesn't have to be your entire brand. Like we're gonna do um, you know, the entire, whatever, Nike brand voice program. No, do the um, Sprinter Shoes voice program. See what happens. Play with a couple of different types of, as was said on stage, a couple of different types, like what is the voice of your brand? You're not gonna come up with that off the top of your head. You're gonna have to experiment a little bit. So I think right now, pick a, pick, pick a product launch, pick a rebrand, pick something that you can do and jump in the water. Don't be afraid of messing it up. It's it's small stakes right now. You know, uh, what, I don't know the percent off the top of my head of people who use voice versus other types of, of search, but it's pretty small and it's gonna be really big very soon. So I would say pick a small project and just go. Well, Brian, good advice. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here and I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, Stream Commerce. Absolutely, my pleasure.